two things. Don't touch this. This is live streaming to our overflow room. And then also don't engage in too much like chatter around that. Those are my those are my requests. In order to do this.
same here. Oh, uh, that's just there to block. I, I would say, yeah, put that over to like where that's going. It's going to lean against that. Hey! What are we going to block? Are they blocking around? Thank <laughs> you. 
if you're from a seasoned professional, <laughs> like unlike last year, I'm not nervous anymore. After I talked to him, I became incapable of ever doubting that this man can deliver promise. While I haven't yet heard his set again, I can say wholeheartedly that I know he's about to knock it out of the park. As many as he's been a little quieter this year, we got a little bit on slack there from financial aid going down. <laughs> but there hasn't been a lot of blasts about the injustice of LPs, and I haven't been crowded room even once this year. Uh, apparently, George has been as preoccupied with this time that he's becoming a lawyer. No, he did fairly recently pass the bar in jail. <laughs> to be a character witness for him to a California bar. But I was dismissed to say the least. Confirmed that he wasn't bad. Has he? No. Does he have any tentacles? Is he a serious <laughs> knowledge? No. Not really on that one, but you guys. I got one good question. I believe that the applicant is a good moral character. And I was so fucking stoked to get the answer yes to that one. But I wanted more. I got one lousy binary question to speak possibly about George. And it was a question that anybody would answer yes to. How the hell was the bar going to be able to discern between my enthusiastic, proud, powerful yes and all the other boring, random yes answers that the other candidates must be getting to that question? So given that, I direct this portion of the introduction to the Committee of Bar Examiners of the State Bar of California. <laughs> I hope you're watching this video because I'm getting ready to level with you directly. California Bar, you all just made the biggest fucking score of your entire life. <laughs> George Hayward is a man who is going to change the world. And that's easy for anybody to claim. I'm mean, a whole school of people to claim this. But when I say about this man, there is no hyperbole. George is driven, he's smart, he's kind, he's likable, he's funny, he's innovative, he's all of the good things I could list. Last time I introduced him for a set, I spent a long time detailing all those things, and I could take another 10 minutes to talk about them here if I wanted to. But the thing that sets this man apart is the fact that he's truly principled. He lives and breathes who he is and what he stands for. There are a lot of good people in the world who will act differently based on where they're at or who they're with. George is never that person. George Hayward is so unequivocally and unapologetically true to who he is that if George says he stands for something, I know that he will fight for that stance until the day he dies. He's somebody who wants to see a better world and he'll speak out for that better world each and every chance he gets. You, State Bar of California, are lucky to count this man as one of your members. All right, back to the rest of you. George has been one of the most loyal friends that I could ask for, and I was so blessed to be randomly placed in a squad with him, and even more blessed to become his friend. He's been one of the best elements of the GSP, and he's taught me that it's okay to color outside the lines. I will forever be grateful for how he's influenced me. I still don't fully understand what the phrase come correct means, but George tells me that it's basically a hip hop way of saying, bring your A game. And I know that that's what George is about to do, because I honestly don't think that George has anything in him besides any game. With that, please give it up for my brother, my friend, my squat papa, as he calls himself, George Ion Joel. <laughs> school. It's taken a lot of work to get through this school. It's taken a lot of work to get out of this school. So 
I have to give it up to the illustrious, the industrious, the classic class of 2018. Oh man, thank you. Two long years. When we first came here, there was no Frederick Trump. There was no Me Too movement. And we used to think that the financial aid was being based. <laughs> but classes are over now. And that means it's time for the George Hayward leadership led. Where there are no low passes. <laughs> where there is no negative feedback. And where at the end of the day, there will be no course evaluation. Because Hayward is his own evaluator, and he thinks he's doing just fine. So we come to correct Candace all day. All day. All day. Let's get going. Now, the number one question people have asked me this year, Devin alluded to it a little bit about me being quieter. Where have you been, George? Where have you been? I haven't seen you, homie. I've been applying to jobs. No one told me it was going to be this hard, homie. And I want to say this. No one at the GSB has been rejected for more jobs than George Taylor. I'm proud of this. I said this once, a GSB student stepped to me. The international students have been rejected more than you, George. I said, really? Have y'all been rejected from jobs? Y'all didn't apply to me? <laughs> Have y'all been rejected from jobs you didn't know existed? <laughs> Have y'all been rejected even after you asked to work for free, homie? <laughs> no one has been rejected like George Taylor, I can tell you that. And adding insult to injury, you turn on the news and they tell you how great the economy's doing. <laughs> what about me, motherfucker? <laughs> I remember this actually happened. I turn on the news, they're throwing it to Jim, because Jim is talking about a robust unemployment, uh, low rate. Uh, Jim, this is the most uh, robust unemployment rate I've seen in 18 years. And what's most fascinating about it is if you drill down 2%, it's attributable to a single MBA student <laughs> in the Stanford Graduate School of Business. He keeps on applying and they keep on saying no, his name is George Hanks. I was so Yes, I called in immediately. That's George, John Jordan, Thomas Aquinas Taylor, Esquire, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Thank you. I came here to put some respect on my name like Birdman on Hot 97 as a hip hop representative. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. I gotta just, I gotta just come correct right now. If I see another job description with a requirement like this, Two years of banking, two years of consulting, two years of private banking, the ability to write a zebra, ability to do Python. <laughs> Told me if I had that level of credential, why would I be scrolling through monster.com right now, honey? I would have better things to do. What we need is the job requirements of the people. Needs money, motherfucker. That's the job requirement. <laughs> Thank you. Has kids to feed, prefers to pay rent. That's the job of the department of the people. Motherfuckers are elitist. Now, I don't want to talk too much about jobs, so that's going to be another comedy special. But there is one story. The only thing is, I came here with the name of the firm for legal reasons, so we're going to call it Microsoft. <laughs> A couple of weeks ago, I was applying for a job. It was late on Friday night, and I'm in my room in Palo Alto, feeling kind of bad about this. But then I remembered it was Palo Alto, so I wasn't missing out on anything, so I felt better about that. <laughs> but this was a very difficult job application. You may be familiar with these kinds. It consisted of me uploading my resume, and then copying and pasting everything I already uploaded into a number of type files. <laughs> This took two hours to do, but I kept on working. That's how I was raised. And when I went to bed that night on Friday, I felt a sense of accomplishment because I had tried to help myself 
I woke up the next morning, had at 6 a.m. did a start on the day. I was on my way to the bathroom on the phone bus. And I looked down and it was like a song. They had rejected me in four hours. <laughs> I'm thinking the same thing too. Who from HR is coming in on Saturday? <laughs> There's no way. I, I can see it now. You're in Seattle, and it's like Jim from HR. Why aren't you going to happy hour? Sorry, guys. I've got to get in the office early tomorrow. I want to reject George Hammer before he has a chance to urinate. <laughs> it's disrespectful. Goddamn disrespectful. Like, I, knew, I, know, I know they don't even read the cover letter. I, they don't read the resume. But I would have at least make it to London. <laughs> um, but I don't want y'all to think it's all bad. It's motivational comedy. It's been, I've had some victories as well. Succeeded in one of my life goals, trademark photo of myself. <laughs> some of you are wearing it. <laughs> Thank you. And it was all good until one student at GSP had one comment. And she comes up to me, and I won't she wore many names. She, she came up to me, and she's like, that shirt offends me. And I said, I'm just to get the <laughs> How does the shirt offend you? Well, I think it's not appropriate for you to Google a black person and just wear him on your shirt because that would be cultural appropriation. I said, well, thank you for that feedback. I'm, I'm glad to know how it would land on you. <laughs> but would it make a difference if he gave me permission? Well, as an ally, I do not purport to describe the African American experience. So I wouldn't know. I said, well, as a black man, let me tell you, that's a picture of myself. <laughs> And if a man lives in a country where he can't take a photo of himself and trademark that photo and put on a t-shirt and sell that t-shirt to his friends and a comedy show, then what kind of country are we living in? Not a country I want to be in. That's why I told him, hey, for president. <laughs> Get in while you can. Get in while you can. Now. I do give her the benefit of the doubt because the truth of the matter is I don't look a lot like I used to look because I've been going to the gym. <laughs> I'm waiting for those applause. <laughs> and when I look back at the last two years of GSB, I ask people what was the hardest part about getting through this school. And I never took touchy feeling, but people tell me it's like a touchy feeling. Oh, George, touchy feeling. And whenever I hear that, I know this is a person who did not go to the gym with Ray Hernandez. <laughs> Give it up for Ray Hernandez. <laughs> so Ray came up to me one day, hey, want to go to the gym? <laughs> Oh, you don't say no to that. Going to the gym with Ray Hernandez is like attending Coachella with Beyonce. You don't say no to that. <laughs> okay, so there we were, George Taylor, Ray Hernandez, walking over to the Ariaga gym. We get in there. When Ray goes to the gym, they stand at attention. They, Mr. Hernandez, sir, can we take your bag? So they want our red, they want our red carpet. I didn't even think that was allowed. You trip on that. <laughs> we go to the 30s, right in the middle, 30 rack of the freeway, and I'm getting nervous. Turns out that's where Ray drops his bags. <laughs> True story. He takes a left, goes to the 150s. The 150s. The 150s. So I said, Ray, I'm going to get the machines. I'll see you in 45. We only do three ways. <laughs> Spot me. <laughs> now, I have never lifted 150 pounds in my entire life. But somehow, when you out of my mouth, was, yes, sir. <laughs> 
So Ray is pushing and pushing, it's 19, it's 20, it finally goes spot. And I then proceed to throw up my back, trying to lift one of Ray's triceps. <laughs> By now, there was a scene. The hair was there. I barely remember bugging it in the ear. So, because people are looking. Because there's Ray Hernandez, and then there's George Hayward. Ray Hernandez, and there's George Hayward. Just let that sit in one more time. There's Ray Hernandez, and then there's George Hayward. And then Ray says, your turn. I said, oh, shit. <laughs> he had the decency to go to the 20s. And so there I am lying on the you know black bench thing. <laughs> By now, there's a crowd, because this is like a show. And then I get the 20 weights, and I'm pushing. And Ray says, do it for this crowd. Do it for your legacy. Do it for your dignity. <laughs> And that's when I learned I had no dignity. <laughs> so give it up for Ray for Ray and Dennis. No one like that without putting your work. Give it up for Ray and Dennis. Oh, uh, help me. Give it up for Andrew Sparks. There it is. I don't know what we can worry about. It. A lot of people are surprised to know that I've been getting a lunch every week with Andrew Sparks for the last two years. Every single week. Except this week, it was the show that started. <laughs> <laughs> and people, the first thing I always hear is, Andrew Sparks is a commander of the Navy SEALs. He has served his country in Iraq and Afghanistan. George, you are not badass enough to be getting a weekly lunch with him. And I'm going to say to all those haters, you guys are absolutely right. <laughs> He probably did not expect me to keep on coming back every week. And I remember my first uh, interaction with Sparks, it was a class. Teacher says to the class, talk about the challenge of the workplace. First GSP student raises his hand. No, I need to make sure the interns can use Excel without the mouse. <laughs> Ensuring optimal modeling speed to deliver the, to the client on time. And Sparks raised his hand said, I mainly want to make sure uh, my troops stay calm when receiving enemy fire in Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> and Huggy Rouse, as far as you want to teach the class, he did. <laughs> he did. He gave the first presentation in the history of the GSC that had to be declassified as far as give it up for that. Right. <laughs> and So I went to Sparks after class, and I think I said something to the effect of, Mr. Sparks, sir, would it be possible if I got a place on your schedule if you are in with that, sir? <laughs> He's like, yeah, but you better be consistent. And that's, and that's when I missed it. <laughs> but um, every week, 